Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are going to investigate the very basics of data analysis and econometrics, the multiple regression model. And uh, you might have already applied a multiple regression framework using the Excel Linus function or the data analysis tab. However, you might have been left wondering what exactly is going on in that black box? What Excel actually does in terms of calculations to arrive at those estimators, to arrive at those coefficients, standard errors, and so on and so forth. And today we'll cover that. We'll uncover what Excel does in terms of matrix multiplication to arrive at regression estimation. And we'll investigate that based on a very familiar case. We'll try and explain why countries have different values of GDP, why some countries are richer, why some countries are poorer, by using the basic uh, 20th century model of economic growth, that is the solo model, and the logic of the Cobb-Douglas production function that relates the changes or the cross-country differences in GDP or in output uh, by utilizing the differences of factor endowment of these countries. So some countries might be richer because they have more labor, so higher population. Some countries might be richer because they have higher capital stock, more productive capital goods that can be used to produce stuff. And uh, we'll use the Cobb Douglas function that expresses GDP, uh, denoted YI here, which is GDP of country I, as a product of A, which is the technological constant, total factor productivity, and we have investigated in quite a bit of detail in one of the previous videos, so if you are mainly interested in that, please go through that link. And it multiplies it by factor endowments with labor and capital, LI for labor in country I, and capital KI in country I again, raised to the powers of alpha and beta, which can be interpreted as elasticities of production on labor and capital respectively, or just as our regression parameters. And we can regress here by just taking natural logarithms from both sides, and that would bring those parameters in front of logs, it will decompose the product into a sum, and that allows us to estimate this particular equation using just a multiple linear OLS ordinarily these squares. So let's do just that. Let's calculate the natural logarithm of real GDP, the natural logarithm of population, and the natural logarithm of capital stock. Something is different here in the sense that we need to input manually a column of ones to code our constant, because usually it, the Excel just provides it for us in the black box that is Linus to data analysis tab. So here we can just drag it so that Excel does preserve this as a column of ones and bottom left click it all the way down. And now we can use a simple matrix multiplication formula that is expressed in terms of our X, which is the matrix of explanatory variables, the matrix of independent variables, including the constant, and the, the vector Y of dependent variables of our logarithms of real GDP to arrive at the vector B, which is the vector of our regression parameters. That would include the constant, which is interpretable as a logarithm of A, as well as our alpha and beta, the elasticities of production on labor and capital respectively. So we can just select a three by one area over here, so just a column vector that would give, give, give us the parameters and use matrix multiplication to arrive at the values of them. So first of all, we need to accommodate for this bit of the formula. This is the inverse matrix, so M inverse, of a matrix multiplication of transposed X. So we can just input transpose and select our matrix of explanatory variables, including the column of constants, and multiply it by the same matrix, but not transposed. And that would arrive at this bit of the formula. And then we need to multiply it on the right by transposed x again, and then finally by our vector of dependent variables y. So then we need to 
enforce another matrix multiplication and return the transposed matrix of independent variables over here. So we can just copy that over here. And then we close the brackets and enforce our final matrix multiplication by multiplying everything on the right by the vector of y, the vector of dependent variables, which is logarithm of real GDP. And we can enforce this bulky, however simple, matrix multiplication formula using shift, control, enter. And we arrive at exactly the same regression parameters that you would have obtained from a Linus function or data analysis toolkit. However, we have got one a uh, problem remaining. How can we obtain standard errors for our coefficients? And can we really do that by just using matrix multiplication without resorting to those black boxes? And the answer is yes. However, to do it, we first need to calculate the predicted values of uh, real GDP or logarithms of real GDP for all countries to assess the standard error of the total regression model itself. But it's quite easy to do given what we have already calculated. The predicted value of the logarithm of real GDP for a particular country is just a matrix multiplication of the variables that are characteristic of this country plus the constant onto the coefficients we have just calculated. And we can lock the rows over here because the coefficients, they do not change across our sample. However, the data itself does, so we don't need to lock it here. And we can again enforce this using shift control enter and get the predicted value of the logarithm of uh, real GDP for Aruba at 8.07, while the actual value is 8.15. You can see that the difference is not that big, meaning that our model is quite good. However, we need to do it for all of our sample countries and then calculate the respective residuals, which is the errors that this model has in terms of the predictions or explained values. So the residual would be the observed value minus the expected or predicted value. And we can calculate this difference across the whole sample. And quite naturally, as we used OLS, we have got the sum of those differences converging to zero. That means that our prediction is unbiased. And that's exactly what you want from OLS. That's the one of the purposes of OLS. However, what is quite important here is we can calculate, first of all, the number of the degrees of freedom in the model that we'll use uh, twice in calculating the standard error of the regression and then in testing our coefficients for significance. And the number of the degrees of freedom typically is just the number of observations in our sample. So we can just count our uh, y uh, array elements and subtract the number of parameters in our regression model. That is the number of restrictions we have imposed on our random variables. That is the GDPs of countries in question. And the number of those restrictions, those coefficients, is just count of those parameters that we have just calculated. And we can see that the degrees of freedom in our model is 177. And the standard error, or the uh, squared sum, the, the variance of the error of prediction, can be calculated using, first of all, the squared sum of our residuals, divided by the degrees of freedom over here, n minus k. And to get the standard error and not the variance of error, we can just calculate the square root of that. And we see that uh, on average, our model deviates from the actual value of uh, logarithm of real GDP by 0 0.89. Uh, and uh, this uh, value on its own does not give us any insight into what's going on with the standard errors of these coefficients, but it's instrumental in calculating the covariance matrix of our estimators. So this covariance matrix tells us what is the variance of each and every individual parameter that we estimate, as well as the covariances between those parameters. So we can estimate this covariance matrix using this particular formula that has the standard error or the variance of error of the regression um, quite instrumentally at the front of the formula and uh, use the diagonal of the covariance matrix to assess the standard errors. So the diagonal would show the variances of our parameters. So the square root of diagonal elements would give us the standard errors we look for. So without further ado, we can just multiply the standard error squared, which is the variance of our error term, and multiply it by another matrix multiplication, which is the inverse matrix of the product of transposed matrix of independent variables x multiplied 
by a non-transposed matrix of independent variables x. And then we can close all the parentheses we need and enforce this formula using shift control enter and get our covariance matrix. And again, to retrieve standard errors from this matrix, we need to look at the diagonal and calculate the square roots for the diagonal elements. So for example, the standard error of the constant term would be the square root of this top left element, the standard error of alpha, the elasticity of output on labor, would be the square root of the central element, and the standard error of beta, the elasticity of capital, or the capital factor loading, would be the square root of the bottom right element. And now we can calculate the t stats using the usual procedure, dividing coefficients by the standard errors we've just calculated for all three parameters, and then use the two-tailed t-test, inputting the absolute values of t-stats we just calculated and the degrees of freedom that we have calculated quite a bit ago to arrive at p-values. And we can see that the p-values show overwhelming significance of labor and capital in explaining cross-country differences in GDP, while constant is also being statistically significant. And that's how you can estimate your own multiple linear regression model without the use of either Linust or Data Analysis tab by just multiplying a bunch of matrices. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.